Over the course of the next few minutes, I'm going to take you through the theory behind the Mackay method. As I mentioned earlier, the theory was established on 88 keys, but don't worry if your keyboard is smaller, the method will still work. For those of you with full-size keyboards, feel free to repeat the following steps or just watch and listen. Throughout this DVD, I will use colour coding and animation to point out significant keys or groups of keys. The first step I took was to break the keyboard down into quarters as shown. I did this purely as part of an experiment in division. The next thing I did was locate the quarter interval keys. This is done by counting from left to right in groups of 22 keys as shown here. Once I had isolated the keys 22, 44, 66 and 88, I started to look for some kind of connection or relationship between them. I decided to take these keys and group them together within a single octave. In this example, we have used the top octave. The top octave is located on the right hand side of the piano. It's the last 13 keys. The process of finding the quarter interval keys and placing them in the top octave is achieved through counting groups of keys in a particular order, which I will demonstrate. It is important to remember that as you use the Mackay method when counting, your starting point is always considered number one. Locate the first quarter interval or 20 second key on the piano. You'll discover that this is a black key. In order to find the related key in the top octave, Count up five black keys with the 22nd key counted as number one. When you reach number five, jump to the next black key. This will be the same key you started on but in the next octave. Repeat this process until you find the matching key in the top octave. Remember its position. Now locate the second quarter interval or 44th key on the piano. You'll see that this key is white. The white keys are counted in groups of eight as there are eight white keys to an octave. With the 44th key counted as number one, count left to right eight white keys. As before, you'll notice you've landed on the same key in the next octave. This key now becomes number one in the counting process as you count the next eight keys. Continue this process until you find the same key in the top octave. The counting process is the same for quarter interval three or key 66. Now that you have found all three quarter interval notes in the top octave, I will demonstrate how to find the fourth quarter interval note. As the 88th key is the last on the keyboard and is already in the top octave, to find its related key in this instance, we must count backwards. As with the other white keys, count one group of eight, but this time from right to left. Be sure to include key 88 as number one in the count. The key you land on is the fourth quarter interval in the top octave. So now that we have found all the quarter interval keys in the top octave, I can demonstrate their significance. These four keys have not one but two attributes that change the way I look to the piano. Traditionally, when anyone sits at the piano, they consider the piano to start at the left. 
I always considered the left to be the bottom for two reasons. One, the sound was low, and two, I, like most people in Western society, was taught to read from left to right. It only makes sense the piano should work that way. The quarter interval keys reveal a direct contradiction to that way of thinking, one that allows anyone far greater ease of understanding and comprehension of the piano as a whole. If we examine the four quarter interval keys in the top octave and give them the number values of the actual interval keys, this is what we see. The 22nd key relates directly to the seventh key in the top octave. The 44th key relates to the fifth key in the top octave. The 66th key relates to the third key. And the 88th key relates to the first key in the top octave. As you can see, the four quarters of the piano have been reversed through their related keys in the top octave. In order of occurrence, 88 is first, 66 is second, 44 is third, and 22 is last. The Mackay method suggests that this fact indicates the true flow of a piano, or any keyboard for that matter, is from right to left. The other discovery that I made while examining the quarter interval keys in the top octave is that they landed on numbers one, three, five, seven, within any octave. If you count out these numbers, they give us a grand total of 16, another number divisible by eight. And I was pretty sure that that was no coincidence. This is how the Mackay method began to take shape. Once again, the numbers were relating to eight. The next step I took was to look at the piano in the new direction that I had discovered. I began counting keys and octaves from right to left. Right from the beginning, this made sense because the first key on the keyboard was now a C. And traditionally, octaves are started at the C note. As I counted down through the keys, I found I had three keys remaining after the last octave. I had to explore the possibility that these additional keys had relevance. To me, the obvious thing to do was to include these keys in the last octave. In doing so, I realized that the number of keys in my octave now equaled 16. There's that number again. This is where I developed the theory that the 16 keys held a code that directly related to the 88 keys on a piano. That code is simple, eight plus eight. The new octave that I have named the Mackay octave will hold two related chords joined by a single root note across its span. It also allows the leverage to create simple or complex songs within a single octave. It's for this reason that I've named the three spare keys at the end of the piano, leverage keys. These leverage keys can be applied to any octave on the keyboard. The 16 key or Mackay octave offers boundaries between which you can develop each skill base before moving on to outer areas. And that is one of the reasons it is so easy to learn using the Mackay method. To recap, so far, I've demonstrated that by finding our quarter interval keys and their relatives within a single octave, we can say the flow of a piano can be reversed. In addition to this, we have also discovered when following the flow from right to left, we are left with a three key leverage in every octave, giving us the flexibility of a 16 key octave as opposed to the traditional 13 key octave. The key point is to remember, everything on the piano relates to the number eight. These are the key principles around which the Mackay method was developed. Understanding these basic foundations of my method is not essential for the primary teachings to follow. However, I do feel it is important for you to understand that this unique method was realized through a desire to make learning easier. The Mackay method does complement traditional learning in many ways, or it can be the basis for your entire learning experience. You decide.